Oh no, <laughs> just trying to grab my book. Hi. Hello. It's Monday. Which means it's time to play a, a Dungeons and Dragons. So, hi, welcome to Rise of Tiamat. This is a fifth edition uh, module that I run out of the Tyranny of Dragons campaign, published by the as we know them. <laughs> you know, eh, we know what it is. Anyway, so with that, I have varying opinions, but it's a bare bones. We build the game as it goes. Yeah. So, uh, before we get started, do we have any announcements? Uh, Anything coming up? One, that this Friday we will not be streaming because we will be at Excalibur. Um, nice. So, we'll be doing that. Unless I can find another DM, then we will go live. But, until then, mm -hmm. if not, then we'll have that night off. There you go. Alrighty, then. Do you mind? Do you have any announcements that you wanted to? You gotta get the soundboard ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. I, I got this. It's not. This is not too much. But I tried to climb a really tall tower in France, but I fell off. That was it. Beautiful. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? <Jeez. laughs> Oh god. That was a weird drum roll. <laughs> that was Yeah. Didn't it didn't know if it wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Alright. <laughs> wait, wait, I got one that I read. I'm excited. Oh, do you first one. Ooh. Uh so did you know so you know vacuum cleaners, right? How these work, they just clean up. We stuff. know. We know yeah, of them, we yeah. Know of them. Puppies definitely know of them. But did you know that when you clean the vacuum, you become the vacuum cleaner? <sighs> Mm -hmm. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> I love it. 10 out of 10. Okay. I need to put that on the soundboard. <laughs> 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 All right, then. So let's go ahead and roll through intros. Hi, puppy. I have a puppy that wants my attention. Hi, I am Vic. I will be your DM for the evening. And a lot of very large scary dragons. So, uh, sharing the same aether as me. Uh, hey, Tab, who are you playing? Impatient slash Rosemary, the tiefling ranger slash sorcerer. Nice. All right, and uh, Jesus, who are you playing tonight? Hi, I'll be playing Tarsus Chattington. He is a good boy. Uh, uh, proceed classing into uh, fighter and barbarian, but focusing on good boy class. The goodest boy. And uh, his for his sister, hey, Jeremiah, who are you playing? I'm uh, playing Cordelia Chaddington, the Medusa fighter blood hunter rogue. I had to go it's to a, my it's character a list. sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to All the right. character sheet. And, uh, all right, I'd say, now I could say most tragic for last. Uh, hey, Sydney, who are you playing tonight? God. Oh, there's <laughs> no competition now? Oh, terrible. I think we oh. would lose. Um. I'm Sydney. I'll be playing Nicodemus D. Hawkins, the, uh, human rune knight paladin. Nice. Very nice. All right, so let's go ahead and roll that roll that bean footage. All right.
right. Hi, hi, dog. Hi, dog. Okay, okay let me get my sound rolling. Up oh, there you go. Oh, in other news, I have my eyes again. Oh, good job. <laughs> Been like two months. I'm glad that you were able to do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you found them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah ne next time you should probably like air tag them just to make sure you don't like. Oh no! I, them again. Is, this is a new one because the other one broke. Oh. I don't even know where the other one is. <laughs> Last place I looked. <laughs> <laughs> Unearthed while we've been moving. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. All right. So let's roll through recap to see if we remember what happened last it's been a week that was a cliffhanger no that was it was a cliffhanger so all right you guys have just returned from your stint in termish uh trying to rescue a red wizard by the name of iskander that was looking to defect from the cult of the dragon he had offered you the blue dragon mask as the prize to see him safely uh spirited away out of a den of let's just say a toxic workplace you know there's a lot of backstabbing a lot of trying to like personal like progression like up the food chain it was a hot mess so management <laughs> there's a lot of management issues like Everybody wants to be a manager, but nobody wants to do managerial things. Like, you know, anyway. What a glass door review. <laughs> <laughs> he left a one star and they were like really out to uh, have his exit interview. So. What? Stop. A scrying door review. Okay. That's enough of that. Hey. I will, cause I will, I will quick tandem real quick and say that there was a, uh, there, there was a D and D style like, uh, modern day like, present like our world like real world like, uh, alternate universe that I would like run a role play r role play through and the fun part was coming up with business names using different spells, and uh, I still think my favorite one is Dimension DoorDash, so hey. that's where. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I love that. So, all right, back to it. So you guys tried to rescue him. You uh, visited Hawk's hometown of Binatuan, which ended up being subjected to the experimentations of the Red Wizards, turning uh, people that he has known his entire life into these draconic abominations as uh, a means to amass an army for Tiamat for when she finally arrives within uh, the material plane. And um, so with that... You find the, the hidden tower, Xanthal Tower. You traverse through the maze. You found uh, Iskander. You found the blue dragon mask, that which patients had secretly lifted out of this wizard's bag without him noting. And that now she is in possession of. You found a hawk sister who was kidnapped by the cult. And now has been... Uh, transformed into the new avatar of Tiamat. Hawk has leveled up into a paladin of Bahamut in uh, kind of in a, in a really ironic way. But, you know. So with that, you guys kind of spent your day decompressing from what has happened. Having lost a lot of friends, having lost a scander as he was crushed beneath the tower as it had collapsed in on itself. As and, and Lark as well had also collapsed into a coma that uh, he is currently uh, staying at Donnie's while they look after him. The Chattingtons have reappeared in court as they had finally left the ports of Neverwinter, seeing as how the storm that had kept them there now has finally ceased. You guys were summoned to meet with the dragons to discuss what to do with the final mask, which is the key to stopping, t uh, either stopping or letting Tiamat a uh, release from her prison. As you were meeting with the dragons, uh, uh, another dragon had decided to make himself known through the meeting as Cormoranth, one of Tiamat's top generals has crashed this party. <laughs> He has a lot of names. So that is where we're going to throw ourselves. 
back to the Dragon Council meeting. As you guys were in the midst of trying to discuss what to do, you learned that the masks themselves are tied to Tiamat's power, as she is. They, these are relics that she herself has crafted, and that destroying them is something that is a little complex. <laughs> so, allow me to pop this music over there. So. So you guys stand before these gargantuan, you know, draconic beasts, all perched on the fingers of what looks to be an even bigger statue that has been lost to time through the centuries of war and strife through the Forgotten Realms. And as they were coming to a decision of what to do with the mask, uh, wanting to try to take it to a temple of Bahamut to hold it for safekeeping, Cormoranth had made himself known as he rides his way into the uh, into the uh, clearing. As you are all very aware of how massive he is, as with each step he takes, the ground shakes beneath you. And all of the metallic dragons, they're, they're, you could see their... Um, for those that have, like, the fins, you watch as their fins kind of twitch. For those that don't, you see as um, the scales are, like, the patches of soft scales that are around, like, their jowls and, like, their nose as they wrinkle and twitch as well. As they are all very, uh, very perturbed by the presence of this red chromatic dragon. As they all start hissing and growling and in draconic um patience since you are the only one who understands draconic yep <laughs> yes Wait. oh no did your computer go down i just said i had to restart oh i'm sorry i missed that so i know draconic oh you know draconic yeah Oh, perfect. Well, all right. So Cordelia and Patience, as you will hear these dragons muttering amongst themselves in Draconic, as uh, it's pretty much a conversation of what is he doing here? He has no right to invade upon this sacred meeting. And Cormoranth uh, will speak in common, as he will say, I heard there was a summon for a meeting of dragons. I didn't think there was a discrimination on what colored scale would be attending this meeting. I think I'm within my right to be here. Yes, Cordelia. Uh, no, it's just more a little RP, basically. But sure. No, go ahead. When, when I heard the them chattering in Draconic about uh, a sacred meeting, blah, 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 why is he here? And then... Are they kind of getting like angry or or upset about so uh, what's uh, his name Cormoranth coming? Cormoranth, yeah. So go ahead, you can roll me an insight, but I will say for just at the base, they do uh, seem I very have, upset. I have disadvantage on that, I believe. Oh, I'm frightened. So I that is take, correct. You uh, are frightened of these beasts. Yeah. I insight, you said? Yes. And my insight's pretty good. So <laughs> that is a 19. 19. Okay. So at, at the very base level, you okay. can tell that they seem very, you know, upset. Yeah. But there's there is like a deeper there's there's like a deeper layer to it as well. And you don't want to say it out loud. At least you don't it, it's it's kind of like that you don't know if you should, but mm -hmm. it's one of those things where you're like it almost seems like they're afraid, but that seems unheard of for a dragon to be afraid. Okay, no, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, you are you are terrified. But <laughs> if you if you to to think that a dragon is afraid is uh, almost like an oxymoron in a way. It's like I feel that, but I don't believe it. Basically, kind of like right. That. Yeah, but so, they are definitely they are upset, and the, the you can feel uh, like you can sense an anxiety uh, amongst them as. Um, well, in another way you can tell is, you know, your brother, um, 
a, a lot of his uh, communication, uh, nonverbal communication, can be seen through his tail, and you've kind of learned to kind of interpret how the tail moves and what that means. And so, looking at these dragons' tails, you can see that they are twitching, they're lashing, some of them kind of scraping loudly against the stone, almost like a a threat display. Okay. Um. So when when they started muttering or saying stuff in draconic, yes. Uh. Our, just RP prayers is basically like yeah. I will kind of hug the arm arm of uh, Hawk a little bit harder. Yeah. Because it was like, oh no. Yeah. It's like base thought is basically like, oh no, they might start fighting. <laughs> and then to an and like you, you become very aware of there's a lot of very big bodies yeah. that I might start moving wanna... very fast, and that's terrifying. Like I don't want to be this close to this so yep. like i will hug the arm tighter and uh hawk will notice that cordelia is kind of moving very slowly away <laughs> hawk, you start to feel like a, a like the gentlest of tugs <laughs> as your arm is like slowly moving back like i'm going i'm going basically kind of this way <laughs> is she, is she like letting this. go of hawk oh no it's the the hug on the arm is very tight you, that you, are, you guys you are might get, together. So, you might so slowly she's get like numb. trying to drag Hawk. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. No avail, but you know. <laughs> she wouldn't say that out loud, but like she's definitely yeah. wanting to move away. But she also doesn't want to let go of your hand. I was about to say, that's, it, the point isn't to drag him around, but it is to get away. And if that is where he has to go, then so be it. Hmm. All right. So I as you guys kind of know. shuffle. Yeah backwards is discreet. Are you trying to do it discreetly? Like, I I get I, I, as discreetly as, as I don't think it's discreetly at all. Like, he's, she's afraid, but she, her chin is still up. Like, just the out chin up still, like. All right. I got this. I'm like, I'm pretending I'm tough. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> One second. He's probably not really paying attention. He's probably like, if she's pulling, he's probably just taking steps, but he's not taking his eyes off of what's going on in front of him. It's just, he's kind of like taking steps to keep his own balance as she's moving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so when that's going on, uh, and Tarsi, since you're right next to him, mm -hmm. uh, you will kind of see uh, Jamal's head kind of tilt to the side and there's a moment like his ear kind of like twitches with it and under his breath you just kind of hear him rumble don't run if you need to move don't turn your back <laughs> never turn your back <laughs> is this just the Tarsius or kind of oh, to, to yeah all of you in his little area okay when he says when he says that, I'll like plant my feet down and I'm like, oh, he knows what he's saying, so I'm just gonna stop here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, patience. Um, with what Morgan said about you know, oh, well, uh, what was the exactly he said? Which part? <laughs> Uh, the thing about, like, you know, well, I heard there was a... Oh, yeah, there was a meeting. Yeah. A, a, a meeting of dragons was called, and I came, obviously. She's, she's gonna move up, up my feet here. Oh. Just take a step, and I'm looking directly at him, and, because she's not frightened. As you were all very, very aware of the smallest member of your party <laughs> stepping towards the angry dragons. Cordelia would definitely gasp out loud. <laughs> very <laughs> slightly. <laughs> and, uh, Cormoran. <laughs> And in Draconic, it's just going to be like, because you weren't wanted here. Oh. <laughs> Tail's just lashing behind her like a pissed off cat and everything, too. <laughs> Stress me out. Uh, <laughs> stressed. Me out. stressed. The, only person, the only person who's more stressed than Hawk is probably Cole. Cole, Cole is... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Cole, Cole, is a, Cole is a very vibrant shade of, of magenta, but at this point, you can see the color starting to drain from his face. <laughs> she, he's gray right now. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, honestly. As he's like under, like kind of like between his teeth, he's just like, Rosemary. Rosemary. <laughs> yes. So, you say that to Cormorant, and the uh, 
there's a moment where like his thought, like his eyes are like burning coals when he looks at you. And then he kind of glances away. Oh. As if you're not worth his time. Oh, okay. And he looks directly to uh, Prothanther, who is the, you know, the, the, the more or less of an anointed king of the Metallics. As he, as he will say, I was under the assumption that a call for dragons to meet was a call for all dragons to meet. I simply answered the summons. Now, if you want to, I guess, I don't want to say disrespect your, you know, patron, your father, by, you know, acting so close-mindedly about my presence at your meeting, then... That's up to you. I am merely wanting to open negotiations. And your father talks about justice. He talks about, you know, keeping the world within balance. Don't you think it is in within the good of justice to want to hear what I have to say? to know what it is I bring to this proverbial table. Or if you want, we could just simply play by the laws of chromatics, and I could invoke primal law. And when he says that, all the dragons immediately get quiet. <laughs> and it almost sounds like thunder when you hear them, like, a growl erupt from the chest of the closest one to you, uh, right here. And in, uh, common, they'll, they'll, they'll also be speaking in common at this point, since he has chosen the common tongue. As, um, this one right here. God, I don't remember your fucking name. <laughs> I forgot almost all of their names immediately. <laughs> I just know that one... And that one, and then these two is just... Wait, I have a book. It's Sally. I'm like, you have a book! <laughs> I'm sorry, the cat's in front of it, so object permanence Obviously. just kind of left oh, me. Oh, that's fair. Look at him, Rue he's was like, a... you should. He's like, you should have named one of them Rue. I should name one of them Look at him. Look this one here. could be Rue. It's, 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 it's like the same colors. Almost. Rue's a little bit more unbaked, but, you know. That's fair. Right. Okay, okay. If he reached a nice crispy, well done. <laughs> Would you? Are you capable of that? Alright. No. <laughs> See, my problem is that they all look the same, or at least two of them look the same, and I'm like, yeah. look. look like, I know one's a bronze, and one is a brass, and I'm like, y'all are the same fucking color to me. Like, get a tattoo or something. God, please, honestly, I mean... Right, I believe you oh, are that's the bronze. That's the bronze. Yeah, I'm like that. The the, the patina the patina makes me think that's it's what bronze. I said, the patina makes me think it's bronze. Okay. All right. Okay. So that would be Nimmer. Okay. He's the fun one. Okay. Bye. <laughs> oh God! What did you? God. Uh. <sighs> Bahamut, here's a bitch ass liar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's, uh, a, a, a kind of like this thunderous, like growl, kind of emanates from deep within the bronze dragon, Nimur, as he will say, "You have no right to invoke that law." Patience notes what that is. I will say, y'all can roll me a nature. Okay, so I will do it this way. You can either do nature, or you can do history. History boy. It's the same either way. So that's a 17. Okay, 17. 12 for Hawk. Okay. That makes sense, Hawk. You spent more time studying dry, uh, giants. Yep. With an 18, that's a 23. 
23. Look at you, Tarsius. I studied. He's a, he's a smart boy. I have plus zero to intelligence, but I'm maxing out history. Nice. All right, what'd you get, Cordelia? Did you roll? Oh, okay. That's fine. If you want to roll, you can. It's either nature or history. That's up to you. Well, if it's for Delia, we'll kind of pay attention to it. Probably not. Well, I rolled really badly anyway, so. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> you you were spending more time in like your your debate courses, your PE courses. So. <laughs> History courses were more of Tarsius's thing. All right. I need to turn this down. I'm very washed out. Okay. So, Arceus, patience. I would say that you've learned this more so from your time with Shervithia, the green, the the green dragon. And for Tarsius, this you found this in a very old book that was kind of not mo so much more of an official textbook, but more like an adventuring journal, uh, written by you know someone like some. It was something that your father had collected from an auction, and he's just like, I have the journal of a very famous adventurer. I <laughs> don't know his name. It kind of got smudged with all the blood, but it's very thrilling. <laughs> It's, look, it has Volo's seal of approval on it. That's how you know it's mint. It's <laughs> actually pretty impressive. <laughs> it's, Chattington's got the connects. Okay, so... <laughs> primal law is more or less... It, it is an unspoken law, but it is more so one of pride amongst dragons. That if one is to invoke primal law, it is to give like an absolute kind of... You know, kind of like a like brokering a deal, basically saying I, I like the, the simplest way I can put this is, I want this thing, but if you are preventing me from getting this thing, then I'm going to invoke the primal law, which means that we are now going to fight as you know, basically as you know beasts, as animals. We are going to see who is the strongest, who is the most cunning, and whoever comes out on top is going to get what they want. So, oh, right. yep. So, the primal law is a... It's, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, dragons hold themselves to such a high revere where they, they are, and they, they know they are these, you know, intelligent, you know, these very these very intelligent um, creatures, you know, capable of a lot of complex laws and like structure and culture, but at the same time, they are very aware that they are also just animals and that they are no better than you know just duking it out, claws and teeth and everything. So when it comes down to it, it'll come down to it. It's the the footnote the footnote that I I see Tarsius writing in his in his notebook is it's the the easiest way to remember the shorthand is bet you can't <laughs> bet you can't claws bet you can't so it is the draconic version of a triple dog dare all right so that is how that is known yeah. yeah. As Cormoranth will kind of like tap his talons into the dirt, and patience. You see that these talons are about they're they they're about you know taller than you. So I could either invoke primal law, or you can hear me out. It's your choice. As Prosanther will just. Exhale this sigh as it comes out as this burning sulfuric smoke. What is it that you wish to share with us, Spawn of Tiamat? As if a dragon could preen, he would preen. It's the best way I'd put it. As he will kind of move his way forward. I bring news 
that my mother, my, you know, the titular mother, Tiamat, she is offering mercy. I take... I, I am aware that there is one thing that she's missing. She knew that it was within the possession of a particular wizard back in Zonthal Tower, but upon searching what little remains we could find of him, it wasn't there. We tore apart his hidden demiplane. We've tortured and and searched the remains of any cohorts of his. It wasn't there. But she does remember seeing him with a particular set of adventurers. The ones before you in fact. Now, it would be presumptuous of me to think that maybe someone or something amongst them decided to take it as their own, thinking that they were being clever. It could have happened, it couldn't, maybe, maybe it didn't, but I want to offer the chance for honesty. If you did take it, you can simply say you did. And say that you hold the title of perhaps outwitting Tiamat. I know, quite the prize, isn't it? As he kind of roves his eyes over every single one of you. But if we can't find it, we're going to assume that you hid it somewhere. You know, back in a place that at the moment you call home. And we are willing to search that home by any means necessary. You see, she sent me because I am what she calls efficient when it comes to uprooting civilizations. I have quite an extensive history of it. So I would like to say that I'm more or less a professional. Waterdeep has spent centuries being the, you know, the pride of the nobles for keeping dragons out. But last I checked, it was one of my children that broke that streak a couple months ago, I believe. You want to say that out loud, Patience? She's mumbling that under her breath. Roll me stealth. One moment. Oh, I forgot I have to have my dice out. Silly me, I have to make rolls. You, okay. All right. And what'd you roll? 24? I left my calculator in the other room. All right. So. I'm nervous. I will say, here is your chance. You can say you have it. 
But if you don't, then that's all right, too. Because one way or another, I will find it. Because one way or another, Lady Tiamat will find her way to this surface. So is there anything anyone is doing at this moment? And we're calling this a mercy? Yeah. He's giving you the chance to be honest. That's a mercy. He could have just killed you right now. <laughs> like, I feel like this shown is up and ganked everyone. That trap that your parents set for you, they're like, if you just tell me, you won't get in trouble. Uh huh. <sighs> and you're like, but won't I? It's like, it's like, it's like when you hide your report card, knowing you got like a D on it, and mm. and you're just like, if I got to the mail first, then obviously they'll never know. <laughs> Somehow. Yeah. Somehow. Is, um... The, all, all, all five of those dragons are on edge. Like, you, you watch as their claws are, like, flexing and, like, grinding into the stone fingers that they are all perched on. You see some of them are, like, lowering their heads, and they, like, all muscles are locked. They are ready for a fight. <laughs> yeah, that's what Tarsus is afraid of. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, remember that. That's important. Yes, that is true. And the entire time, Gren is just kind of like, like head down, but he is like inching like back as slowly as he can. Patience is just raw, like Chihuahua anger, just glaring. And the whole time, like, Cole is like, Cole is trying to inch his way as, like, <laughs> quietly as he can. He's just like, Rosemary. Rosemary. Mary. Here. You know, he's now, he has not perfected the, the parent voice. Like, he just can't. Oh, wonderful. Oh, it's not like you're his nine-year-old daughter that's facing these, like, behemoth creatures. Anyway. So. As the, uh, as, as the council will just look amongst each other, and then they'll look to their king, Protanther. As he will kind of raise himself up very, like, his, his head, like, held very high, and his chest kind of, like, puffed out with pride. We cannot allow that. As Cormoranth will just kind of tilt his head to the side and just then I invoke primal law. The second that and I, he moves or twitches, I'm gonna grab my axe. Like, yeah, I know what that means. Yeah. And I challenge you, King of Metallics. It's time when? to duel. <laughs> <laughs> and I will have you know my terms. That when I remove your head from your neck, I will take the blue mask. And Waterdeep will fall. So. There's a long, like, like pin drop silence. And then Protanther just bows his head. I accept your terms. And when I got you from neck to tail. I will return you to Tiamat's doorstep and tell her that her pride and joy failed her. Because justice will prevail today. 
And when he says that, all four of the remaining chromatics take to the air immediately, and they scatter to the far corners of the clearing. Yeah, I was saying... It's like the most terrifying, like, pigeon scatter. You're like, fuck! (laughs) Seeing that she's still there, like, Hawk lets go of Cordelia and, like, goes to grab Patience, like, time to get out of the way! (laughs) Oh no, I lost him behind Gren. Well. There you go. Well. Gren just keeps getting underfoot as you're trying to grab Patience. You're like, come here, come here. And the dragon's like, like going no. in between your legs. You're like, fuck. Yeah, I'm like, I just And then you step up. on his little paw and then he makes a noise and then you oh. feel bad. Oh. He doesn't I'll, I'll, I'll like scoop up Patience like time to go and look at it. Gren, like if you weren't under my feet, you wouldn't get stepped on. Me he's holding his little paw. As he's holding his little paw looking up at you. Like, <laughs> plot twist, it's the wrong paw. Oh. <laughs> Again. Me to my dogs every day. If you weren't under yep. my feet, you wouldn't get stepped on. Correct. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The closest thing to Taurus is being like, you can fuck him up. It's like, yay, yeah, mess that guy up. Grass sister. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> like, scoops. <laughs> I think at this point when that happens to Cordelia is just done. So you carry grabbing me. I will... That is the way to move me right now. <laughs> Cordelia like, just slowly like hides under the hood. <laughs> the ultimate, the ult- yeah, because Cole is immediate. Like once the dragons scatter, Cole is immediately like rushing out there where like as you're grabbing her, uh, Hawk, and he's just like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> like I got her, I got to run. Come on. <laughs> so. Now I get to roll. This is the part where I get to do a initiative by myself. <laughs> With the hand thing, this almost looks like those those orb things that you can use in meditation. Like it's gonna just start rotating. Rotating, yeah, that'd be fun. All right, so let me roll, and I'm gonna I'm gonna just do some some rolls to see how this is gonna go. Because if I just do a fight between two ancient dragons, we're gonna be here for fucking hours. So. You just hear a ghoul in the background, like, all right, guys, place your bets. Hmm? Who would have thought that did a few years? I know. Who would have thought? Who would have thought this is where we end up? Crazy. Hilarious, even. That's that's where Stranger just, like, appears, like, materializes out of the dust <laughs> with, like, a little, like, like, a little ballot box and, like, a little, like, little pink bikini and, like, a little, like, round card. <laughs> like, everybody place your bets. <laughs> All right, so let me roll. I was gonna say Cole was gonna be like, you know, who's going first? What are you doing? She's like, after everything that he did, you're gonna just, you know. Who's on first? Who's on second? Oof. All right, we're off to a great start. So let me roll a number for you. Okay, and I'm gonna roll a number for you. This will be the first round. Okay, this is going to be fun. So, an imaginary gong dings in the background. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, wait, hold on, hold it's, on. We have... Where is it? You have a bonk noise. But, yeah. Mm, mm. Close Don't up. sue us. <laughs> <laughs> that is clearly a sound made on a Yamaha keyboard. Of Anybody could make that sound. Anyone can make that sound. So, as Prothanther will kind of like make his way down from his perch and Cormoranth will starts to um, size him up and they circle each other like, you know, two prowling cats ready to start fighting. And then Prothanther just kind of like flares his his uh, his uh, head fins to like make himself look bigger and they immediately charge each other and you can feel the air like like the like the very like hit of the air as these two giants like clash with each other and it's like they're snaking their heads trying to like bite and like nip at like the soft spots uh that only the dragons know of each other as protanther tries to uh 
uh, wrap his jaws around the jugular underneath Cormorant's, but you watch as Cormorant kind of like s- like snakes his head away, and then with uh, two heavy claws, he grabs onto Prothanther's horns, and then he drives him into the dirt. And now it is time for the next one, because it is going to be two out of three. All right, so we are doing... Okay. Now, roll for you. All right, and roll for you. Okay. So, so he drives him into the dirt, but then Protanther kind of like takes the momentum and he barrels himself forward, picking up a uh, cormorant under his sh- like like uh, like right on his shoulders as he basically throws him into the into the pillars and he watches the stone fingers crack and they fall to the ground scattering and just dust is whipping up everywhere and you guys are just feeling the earth shake beneath you as they are fighting now let's go again and again the whole time i'm just like cheering for our gold boy and he's just like, you got this! Yeah, the, the dragons are silent. And you see that Jamal is just watching, like, transfixed. And you you can... Like, his entire body is just, like, tense. Like, like... Like, he's, like, a complete, like, <laughs> solid, like, stone statue. Okay. All right. All right, so Cor- so Cormorant gets slammed into the fingers, and he falls like to the ground as he starts to try to roll to get himself up, but his wing kind of catches underneath him, and Protanther pounces on him as his claws uh, come down to try to rake at his belly, but then Cormorant kicks both of his hind legs into uh, Protanther and basically sends the dragon like flipping over to the other side of him and he's scrambling back up. Oh, For those that are asking why aren't they using their breath? They both breathe fire. They're both resistant to fire. They know this. They're not wasting their fucking time. <laughs> they are not wasting they are not wasting their fucking time. I was gonna say like no. They're, oh, claw, claw, bye, bye, bye. they're like, we see you. <laughs> okay. So that's first one. That's second one. Ooh, okay. All right. So Cormorant like scrambles up, and then he lunges at uh pr- hello dog good lord his whole ch- that's the noise that Gren made that's for sure <laughs> Jesus Christ so and Prothanther will like flare his wings up to try to buffet uh, Cormoranth back but then Cormoranth kind of like manipulates um kind of like manipulates his head to the side as he kind of like tears with one claw and you watch as the claws go through the uh the membrane of protanther's wing and then his head snakes down and bites into the joint of his shoulder where his wing is connected and you watch as you, and you hear a crack and you see as he rips this wing off of the off this gold dragon <laughs> And just kind of like throws it to the side. So and you just hear uh, this cacophonous like noise from all of the metallics as they're watching. And you can see that they're just like pacing in place, but none of them are daring to move forward. Right. I feel like at this point, Hawk is like super qu- like whispering to Cole. Yeah. If you can teleport. Now would be the time. Oof. And he didn't even like mean it. Like he's just looking. He looks down at patience and then back at Cole. 
like. I don't know, Cole, can we teleport? <laughs> <laughs> can we? I'm sorry. My first thought was, you know, with the whole thing with him ripping off the wings, I'm like, Cole has regenerate. This is a canon event. You cannot interfere. <laughs> All right. This is going to be fun. As feel free to roleplay through this whole thing as you guys are forced to watch these two dragons fight. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was my thing. Is like, as this seems to not be going very well, Hawk is like, like, if, if you can take your child away, take her. Go. <laughs> like, the rest of us might die, but take her. Which Cole, Cole is, you know, trying to, you know, grab for your hand, uh, patience, yeah. just so you know. She's getting mad. He's just like, we need to take our chance to go now. Taurus is just, like, scooting in front of uh, his sister and actually trying to look into the sky or anywhere to see if there's more chromatics out there that we just are, like, so focused on this that we can't, like, scout around. Like, are we surrounded? Can we leave? Roll me perception. Okay. Let us get a perception roll. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, 12 plus, where are you? Uh, that's 7, uh, so 19. 19, okay. So you kind of, like, you're, you're looking at the sky, you're looking around, and it is, like, it's, it's currently, like, sunset, so you kind of look up, and, like, there's, like, points where the sun kind of glares, and you, you're not quite sure, but... Right now, the skies like, and you're listening as well, and you and you now can recognize the sound of a dragon flying, as you've heard them many a times before, and you don't hear that familiar like reverberation of the air. Seems like he's he came by himself. That's ballsy. Which is scary. It seems. Am I? Yeah. It's it seems like he came by himself. Okay, I'm gonna like. Slightly whisper that to uh, everyone in the room, like, um, if he came by himself, that means he has a lot of confidence, and that's not good for us. Like, yes. Yeah, Hawk just like Hawk nods. To, with that's hard to saying that is just still looking at Cole, like. From what he like, knows about yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the primal, um, primal law. What is the thing when it comes to interfering? Outside influences interfering. The interfere is an immediate death. This is a this is a conflict between those two dragons. You cannot interfere. Like to interfere with primal law is to make an enemy of both dragons. Because you were, as Shervithia would have explained it to you, you are humiliating, you know, the one that you are helping by making it, basically giving the the unspoken uh, assumption that you believe that, that that dragon is weak and that it needs you to help. Discussing that with Cole, she's like pacing back and forth. Like Cole's, Cole's just like, patience. We need to go. We need to leave now. Why? Like, while we have a chance. Rosemary. Yeah, and she's just gonna get frustrated and turn around. And what happened last time we ran from him, huh? Hawk is gonna like kneel down, like, in front of patients and be like, kid. And he's gonna look like, he's, he is so dead serious, like, 
he's gonna sit there and he's gonna look at you for a long second and be like then you live to run another day and he's like you might just be the most important person standing here right now and I think you know why and if we get you away from them then if at any if at nothing else if you can keep you away from them until the solstice passes could buy the whole world another day Hawk's like you're too young to sit here and 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 knowing what might happen like he's going to be like you are capable and you are bright, but you are just a kid. She's gonna pop out her cheeks and look down to the ground, not making eye contact with Hawk, but she knows he's right. Oh, apparently, like, why the fuck can't she listen to me like that? <laughs> <laughs> it's always the old well, gee, I wonder why. Cole, like, <laughs> did you do that? <laughs> teach me! How did teach you do me! That? <laughs> <laughs> uh. But yeah, Hawk will just kind of sit there and he'll ruffle her hair and be like, choose to live. Because he's going to sit there and he'll look back at the, drag the dragons and at Bertanther and be like, because I don't think he's going to. And then he's going to stand up and kind of, yeah, you can see him like. Shield, fancy shield, glinting, like, sword, ready to be drawn, like, we know what's about to happen is about to not be good. I'm gonna say, as you stand back up, Hawk, uh, Janva just kind of, like, looks you up and down, and she just nods, like, I see our mutual benefactor chose well. I think that's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> it's a compliment. You can take it. I might not have a lot to give right now. We might be on borrowed time at this point. Yeah. As you guys are watching uh, this fight, it's becoming very apparent that, that these are two ancient dragons. But you can see that while it, it, an ancient dragon is it, it's a scale that you can't comprehend in uh, you know the lifespans that you have been given uh, as you don't quite know how old these dragons are but in this moment you can clearly see that protanther is past his prime and cormoranth does not show any signs of stopping soon as this fight is happening, you feel the ground shake as Protanther's body falls. As he hits the ground hard and you see Cormoranth put uh, a heavy claw at the jugular to this dragon's neck. like, And you can see as the ground is starting to crack as he is pushing him into the ground with a insurmountable force. His other, his back leg, pinning his one remaining wing. As Cormoranth looks very much like the cat who caught the canary. She says, I will be taking that mask now. As well as your head. And you hear all, and it is the loudest noise that you have ever heard. Like, you, you, you've been through so much you've fought great monsters you've witnessed a leviathan or a you know, kraken excuse me wake up from the depths of its frozen slumber but this is probably the loudest noise that you've ever heard in your life as 
all of these metallics shriek out in mourning. As Cormoranth snaps his head down, wrapping his jaws around Protanther's neck. And you watch in one quick motion as he twists, and you hear the crack. And you watch as this dragon's body stutters and then falls lifeless. But then Cormoranth keeps twisting as he puts all of his weight into this dragon's neck as he's doing what he had promised. And he removes the head from its neck. And he takes that head and he throws it at your feet. As this... And even though it is just a head, it is a massive head as this lifeless gold eye rolls and looks towards you all. And Cormorinth looks at all of you, and then he looks at Patience. You have five minutes. Then Waterdeep falls. Your time starts now. Look at my sister. We didn't promise anything. And <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I didn't sign up for this at all. Like I didn't put my hand in. I didn't shake there was. Hands. There was no blood. There was no contract. <laughs> yeah. Samantha taught me well. And then you. There's a moment where all of your ears pop as his wings beat out and lifts him into the sky, <sighs> and he flies towards water deep. Hawk, like, okay, first of all, does anyone have a message that can tell the people of Waterdeep that a dragon's about to attack? Second of all, if he wants this in five minutes, how is he gonna go and fly off to Waterdeep? Like, he left without it. I... Okay. Um, Hawk's like, you know what? No, I'm not gonna question that. Uh... As Gala will just... He's confident that we have people we care about in the city. And that... Naturally, we're going to go find them. It's an inevitable. He's perhaps one of the most cunning red dragons within this century, I would say. If not several centuries, but... Like so, what do we do? What do? How do we? How do we? What? What do we do? You all have. You have five minutes. Oh, Vic setting a timer. Ah. And oh. now, <laughs> you know, I'm not. I'm not going to give you guys like five minutes to decide that. That's kind of torture for all the ADHD brains. Yeah, because now I'm like, eh. <laughs> panic. Oh. Yeah. All I can hear is the clock ticking. But oh. if you want, we can take a break now. We can take dogs out. We can give ourselves restroom breaks. Then come back and you guys can come up with your collective plan. But right. Waterdeep has five minutes before oh. it falls. And he plans to make by, uh, make on that promise. So, Like Wes is going to come outside like, I just built this tavern. It's like, this tavern is not falling. Fuck you. <laughs> Like, there's some heroes in Waterdeep. Not enough heroes in Waterdeep. West, West will yeah, one, two, one, that dragon. Three, three <laughs> retired adventurers that are, like, at max, like, level 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah they got it. Yeah. Right, I was so. saying, West will 1v1 the red dragon. <laughs> yeah, let's now we're They'll never see cow coming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's... All right, let's take our, let's take our break. All right. Okay. All right.
Gelatinous cube. Look at this poor bloke. That's his femur sticking out. He tried to stab him. Made him mad. That's his shield. It's melty. No, no, stop. No tangents. We we are we are too fucking brain spicy for any more tangents. I got a schedule to keep, ma'am. <laughs> what if we gave it to Donnie? Oh fucking try. Okay, so <laughs> we are back after much deliberation on what the plan of action is. So, you guys, after Cormoranth flies off towards the cities, your ears still ringing from... Um, the fight that had just transpired. All of the metallics had gathered around the body of Protanther, the fallen gold dragon, king of the metallics, as they all bow their heads. And then they start making these, um, like, I hear the dog eating something. Sorry, I got. Gonna be myself. Okay. Squirrel. Sorry, I just heard the dog eating something. I'm like, you're not supposed to be eating anything. <laughs> so, anyway, what do you get? He got a piece of rice or a chunk of rice. Oh, okay. As long as it's rice. <laughs> I was like, we ate fish. He shouldn't be rooting in the garbage. So, anyway, as they all start making these, uh, the noise you've never heard a dragon make before. Like you've you've heard. The entire spectrum of, like, ferocious noises to, like, these, like, almost, like, I'd like to say in a way these the, the dragons kind of, like, mimic these sounds that are very similar to, like, birds in a way, but very, like, deep and guttural. But, and as they all gather, uh, Jamal will just look to all of you and just say, go back to the city. Get, you know... Get your affairs in order. This is... This is gonna be a fight. We need a minute. Uh, we, we'll need a minute here, but... Once we are finished mourning... I'll try to, you know... I'll try to find you. I'll try to see if I can convince them to... Help. If 
they can. Uh, I wait. Who? Mm. Jamal. Yeah. Hawk, like, do you know where any of the uh, giants are? Are there any giants nearby? Uh, John will be the one to. Um, I can hail King Blagothkis. Uh, they're all convened on his castle, but it might take um, might take a minute for them to appear. He's not currently uh, land bound at the moment. I mean, better better late than never. We'll need all the help we, we were, can get. We were planning on convening at the Well of Dragons, but. I'll see how fast I can get him over here. <laughs> Just miles in distance, you're sc <laughs> <laughs> Hits the nitro. <laughs> right. I... The best I can do is pray for a good headwind. And she'll, uh... As you guys basically hoof your way back to the city, uh, making it there uh, the fastest as you've been able to... And uh, she'll stop at the gates and she'll look at all of you and just be like, I know you have people in the city. Do what you need to do. I'll head to the castle. Okay. Oh, the castle, the Waterdeep one? Yeah, Waterdeep Castle. castle. Yeah. I'll, I'll notify the council that things are about to get a little hectic in here. So, and she and Gala will basically run their way. Uh, finding like a pair, like they'll they'll kind of like stop by the, the the guard stable and they will grab some horses and they are just hoofing it straight to the castle. So where are we going? As time is now ticking and you hear the sounds of the dragon's wings beating and as you guys make it through the gates, you hear the panic start to swell in the crowds as people have just heard, you know, a dragon and some of them have even seen it like they were pointing at the sky to where they had seen this great red beast just crest over the walls like it was nothing and then just disappear. Uh do we need to get people to evacuate? Yeah, we do that. Um, yeah. Do we? Do we? I'm gonna look at um, Hawk at this point. I'm like, do we want to split up? You know, we divide and and then we conquer. Um. Uh, sure. Yeah. Hawk is like, okay. So is is the burning board in the trade ward? Yes, the burning board is in the trade ward. It'll be like the fastest. Like, it'll be the first thing you hit as you guys are making your way into the city. Yeah, that would be. Hawk being like, we need to stop here first. Uh, 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 and yeah. Hawk will be like, I can do that. We're running out, like, we should do two teams. Um, uh, Patience, Hawk, and Sis, and Bro. Patience was going to raise her hand like, I was considering, you know, going and contacting my grandpa over in like, call in, a, in, in severe Garyan. panic. Garyan. Grandpa okay. Garyan. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hawk, like, is the other one really not bad of an idea right now? <laughs> <laughs> the, You're if, kidding. If looks could kill. <laughs> if looks could kill. The look that Cole would give Hawk. Hawk, like, you're almost as scary as Grayson Tatterick. I'm going to go sound the alarm in the bar. Oh. <laughs> uh, Do it. Do go that. To the, the, at least... Uh, yeah, the church. We need to warn all the paladins in town. I was gonna say, as good uh, idea. As everyone's talking about this, Patience is reaching into her bag and pulling out Greta and just being like, I told you we could talk to, to your, you know, your half sister, but no. We I don't, don't have, oh. I don't have a half sister. We are not talking to that side of the family. Yeah. Um, Patience is going to pull out Greta. Okay, you pull out Greta. Into the, you know, Pokeball go. Yeah. To have a big goat that is the side of a size of a riding horse. Okay. Um, she's casting haste on Greta. All right. Oh, Jesus. Greta can move 120 feet per. That was the fastest fucking goat. <laughs> <laughs> that goat is moving like a fucking Lamborghini through the yeah. streets. Um, Great. Since Great. it is the size of a riding goat, she would just be like, "Papa, you coming with me?" So I'm not left by myself. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, let me grab your dragon. I can 
fit one more person on here, I'm assuming. Oh, and you have a, a, a small oh, stubby yeah. dragon that's like... Yeah, she's going to put in front of her. She needs a little, little baby carrier. Yep. <laughs> As Cole will climb on to sit behind you. Yeah, Hawk will be like, where are you going? In case we need to find you. I'm going to... Where is the, uh... The castle wharf where they would have been? So, the guardhouse where Irian uh, and Varen are stationed is literally right between the trade ward and the castle ward, so... Yeah, she's heading. Alright. So, basically, the main guardhouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she'll just even put it to Hawk. Just... Alright, so patience, and main guardhouse... I'll put you right there. Hawk, you said you were going to the tavern war first. Yep. Yep, because he's going to look for West and, well, he's mostly looking for Care, but okay. both. I'm assuming Care is probably working, but Burning Boar first. Okay. All right, and uh, Parseus and Cordelia, you said you were going to the church? Yeah. Um, as we're, like, heading to, and, like, uh, confirming plans. I'm gonna look at uh, Hawk like you're we're gonna get uh, Father Lark, right? He's he's my next stop after I find West Karen. Okay, okay. The sneaky one. All right. The, the catcher's name. Um, <laughs> Don't I'm pretty sure he hasn't, like. so, he hasn't been so. formally introduced. He's like, but I know there is another person in that tavern. I know there is. Hawk so, is like so slowly sneaky. going crazy, thinking that you know he's like I know there's a person there, that but is then my own personal poltergeist. I have no idea who it is. <laughs> he's, he serves Steve for some reason. At this, right? at this at this point, like I'm pretty sure it's a game to cower about. He's just fucking with him at this point. Um. Yeah. All right. So we'll we'll work our way up. So we'll start with as you guys are all running your separate routes. Patience just charging on ahead on Greta. As everybody is like, like literally diving out of the streets, as this giant white blur just like makes its way uh, down uh, the main road. Uh, Hawk, you make your way to the tavern, and uh, Tarsius and Cordelia, you said you were heading straight to the church. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go up in order. So we'll start with Hawk. So let me grab the burning boar real quick. Now, what's the church here? Like, what is, like, the main... Is there a main one that... Though, so, since Waterdeep is such a very large okay. and eclectic city, um, there's a lot of big churches there, but... Uh, right, the closest one... Um, it's one of those things where it's, like, you have, like, very big churches, and the one yeah. that you would be heading to, which would be in the, kind of, like, the, the Castle Ward area, is... Kind of like a big non-denominational that have several small chapels dedicated to whichever deities, as you know, as a as a kind of a means to not offend one over the other to make them okay. seem like one's more important. They they all have like you know okay. equal in size uh, chapels that allow for you know people to go to and pray. Get everybody that I need in the tavern in the tavern. Um, I guess on the way there, I will tell Tarsius. Which one do we go to? Um, uh, I only know of one, I, really. Um, yeah, there's like kind of our family kind of uh, hollows the paylor. Uh, like she does have that little emblem because that's where she works, but I she's guess. not really a paladin. <laughs> if, uh, if they're not too far apart. <clears throat> Uh, Tarsus wants to go to Frat's uh, okay. location first. Yeah, okay. at least yeah, that's uh, good. make sure that we get that one, and then we can go to Paylor's and then just like make a line going towards our end destination. Okay. Like, knock on the door of every church. Do you have a moment to talk about the fact that we have a dragon attack, please? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dragon's coming! Uh, just get everyone uh, safety help out. Okay, bye. Just grab everyone. Hey, dragon attack! Bye. Dragon attack! Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about you two. You There's a dragon here. coming. There's a dragon coming. Right. The dragons are coming. No one expects the dragon inquisition. Okay. So. Ha 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 ha. All right. So Hawk, you run your way into the tavern, like throwing open the door, um, and 
<clears throat> finally feeling like all of that speed catching up to you as you had just dead sprinted in armor into the tavern. Huh. And it is... Let me get... Oh, I missed a few people. You are not here. You are not here. I had to empty that tavern. Okay. Whew, there we go. All right. Tavern. All right, so you kind of like throw open the door, stumble your way in as the door closes behind you. As it's fairly empty, you have uh, Chattington and Samantha sitting at the ta at their table, uh, kind of enjoying a nice like early dinner. As uh, Zevier and West are at the bar, uh, in basically like what looks like hot debate right now. Oh, Gosh, like runs running up to the bar. All right. Well, okay. Hopefully first wait. of all, what are they fighting about? Okay. Oh. <laughs> so as you. <laughs> I have to know. As, I'm sorry. As you walk in, uh, they are in hot debate over. Okay, so, uh, so uh, Zevier is just like, I am telling you, I have studied this, I have read books on this, I have taken a whole class on, you know, monster culinary, and I'm telling you, mimics are equivalent to crab meat. And West is just like, I think a mimic could be any kind of meat it wants to be. Honestly, like, why does it have to be crab? And it's like, I'm telling you, it is down to the texture. The fucking texture. It's how you cook it. And it's just like, I mean, it has a tongue. Crabs don't have tongues. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and you're just watching Zebby get more and more red in the face. And like when you run, uh, like, when you swing that door open, like, and it hits that wall and slams shut, like, they kind of stop and they look at you. Hog is literally like, like, where's the fire? In the oh, sky. It's coming. <laughs> Hawk, Hawk, like, so that didn't go well. That didn't go well at all. Uh, Cormoranth showed up, the big red one, the big ancient red one, showed uh, big up. Big ancient red, okay, I mean. He okay. killed Protanther, the gold dragon. I don't know who dragon. that is. Oh. He, the, he, an ancient gold dragon killed him. That's Once bad. the mask is now about to attack Waterdeep. You said in a like, lot of things very fast. In like, Swiss. now. How can you like stop and be like ancient red dragon attacking water deep, like now? So like when you say now, this... I mean like the people in the streets are already panicking. I'm surprised you can't hear it. All right, and as you were having this it's conversation, like, I haven't had my my carriage order done yet, my produce order. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's just like, I'm still waiting for, I'm still waiting for Cisco to get here. Like, I can't leave until I un unload that pallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you, as you're, you know, word vomiting all of this to West and Zevi, Zevi is looking more and more pale uh, in panic as you were telling him that there is about to be a, a huge conniption through this city. Uh, there's a moment where you hear the sound of a glass hit the bar. You don't see wh where it happens, but it just like sits on the bar, and there you have yourself a nice cold glass of water to help yourself catch from huh. all that running. Like, and whoever you are, there's a dragon attacking the city. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of the bar. Uh, and and yeah, then Hawk will look at, at West and Tavi and be like, we need help. Um, and then he'll look at right. Samantha and Chattington and be like, stop. I'm sure uh, you just heard that. <laughs> so, as you, right as you say, we need help. The door to the tavern, uh, you hear the door to the tavern swing open. And I am going to have this character introduce themselves. Ooh. All right. So, walking, so walking into the tavern as, right as you say, I need help. Hey, Nick. Would you describe your character to us? Sure. Uh, in walking into the well, not walking into the bar, flying into the bar, you see a small-ish fairy lady, uh, <laughs> in darker reds and blacks, uh, armors and whatnot, with this multicolored wings, uh, holding on to a, for her, fairly large. Uh, glaive um but it i say glaive 
but it looks like um, sort of like the Egyptian like uh, half sickle uh, glaives. <clears throat> Very nice. Um, she just kind of flies into the bar and looks around and just kind of goes, well, this isn't exactly where I was planning to be, but I guess this is where those two idiots had sent me. I hear there's a hubbub. So, as uh, Huck, you will hear this uh, this small feminine voice say, just that, as you just you know proclaim that help is needed. It appears help has arrived. <laughs> oh. How convenient! <laughs> it's almost like. There's a connection that yeah. is going to be really funny in a minute. <laughs> As Nick, how do you say your character's name? Just so I can remember that. Uh, it's Miria or Mara. All right, cool. So Miria, you float your way very elegantly into the bar, holding a paper note that for, I would say, the uninitiated, looking at it, it is pure chicken scratch and just... Looks like the scrawlings of, you know, a madman. Which you would agree is true. Because Stranger wrote this note. <laughs> With some side annotations from <laughs> Beerus Bolin. As the note itself uh, would have stated, um, just look for the uh, the big sad idiot. You can't miss him. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Rude. I take it you're the uh, the big sad idiot. <laughs> As they have said. Hawk like, and you are? Miriam or Mara. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, for now at least. <laughs> what does that mean? Is it about to get less pleasurable? That depends entirely on the way you act. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, no, I, I they don't have time for that. What? What? What do you want? Who are you? What are you? Why are you here? He just hands the note over. Hawk, you recognize <laughs> this handwriting. <laughs> Great. But at the and very bottom, it says, uh, "If Hawk is reading this." Tell him I said hi. <laughs> this is my leg pickles. Oh, <laughs> it smells like something. <laughs> it definitely smells like it It was dipped in a, some kind of brining liquid. <laughs> There's an odd, stain, like an odd like stain in the corner that is a little has, bit sticky. And you're just... There's a, there's a tang to it. <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> it was in his pickle pocket. <laughs> Better than the cheese pocket. Um, Better than the cheese pocket, yeah. Only maybe. <laughs> I don't know. This time, I think um, he's working on a on fermenting like a like a spicy garlic batch. So we'll see. Oh God. <laughs> All right. So. I have a quick quick question yes. for character description for media. Okay. Are you a like a fairy, like you're tiny. I'm like tiny small. Fairy? Okay, small size. Small, okay, small yeah. size. Okay. I'm not tiny. I'm small, so I'm probably about one and a half, two feet. Yeah. In, in okay. between there, kind of depends on what she feels like. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> but she is small. Um, so for everyone else, the weapons and everything else look small, but to her, it's rather large. Okay. That might look like a toothpick to Hawk, but it's not. Yeah, so this is this is the help that uh that stranger has sent for. <laughs> because he cares about you so much. <laughs> Instead of coming himself. And if you and if you do read the note further, it basically states, um let me find that note. So something something you're basically saying. says, I've got some <coughs> kids that think they can fight the god. <laughs> and they need the babysitter. 
<laughs> Rude. And for the low, low price of, you owe us a favor. <laughs> I'll go sit there and read that and be like, yikes, you owe him a favor. Of course. Worse. Not anymore, uh -huh. I don't. <laughs> she cashed in. Fair. <clears throat> well. And to be fair, I owed Beerus a favor. Beerus is the one who owed Stranger a favor, so Beerus cashed in favor adjacent. my favor <laughs> to pay his favor. All right, a hawk's like okay, yeah. The, the, the I don't know if I know who that is. Um, well, you'll meet him eventually. But okay, okay so, so what? What? What can you do? How can you help? What? Like what? What? what, oh. what? I has I hate asking people this. What do you bring to the table? With the bar, as it were. Oh, that's a lovely question. Ah, uh, well, for starters, I can heal your fucking arse. And I can kick it as I'm doing it. So, it kind of depends on what you want me to do. Cool. Uh, we might need to fight a dragon. Can you do that? Probably wouldn't be the first time I've done it. As you say that, the window panes like start shuddering violently as you hear the sound of a dragon like cresting overhead. And the wings beating very, you know, loudly. Hawk just like sits there and like you just you see that like the full body shiver with his eyes closed and be like, no, oh, he's here. Um, um Sounds like much bigger than a dragon than normal. It's an ancient dragon. What fucking color? Red. God damn it. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> like why did I say yes? <laughs> well, what does your party look like? What does your force look like? What what are we working with? Uh, well, right now I'm here. Uh, just me. Uh, the problem. And, and then, then... So I was told uh, you are. To, look. <laughs> um, and then, uh, we have two other party members. Uh, big, 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 big minotaur guy. Uh, can, can fight, can do things. Uh, best boy. And then his sister, uh, Medusa, and she's, like, super sneaky and stealth, and, like, she hits real hard, real good. Like, all the combos, it's really impressive. And then, in a dip, they, they went to go get paladins, and then the kid and Cole went to find Irian in the city guard oh, on back. the back of a goat big one uh and then, and then our cleric and his face is gonna fall for a second like shit um oops <laughs> it's in a coma in the north ward so what i'm hearing is you have a bunch of children and someone who is supposed to be helping you heal who can't fucking do anything but hardly breathe he looks really cute doing it. She's a slut. It's so important. He looks so peaceful when he's asleep. <laughs> She's gonna flick you in the forehead, Hawk, and be like, that is not important right now. We have a fucking dragon flying overhead. <laughs> you can deal about, you can worry about you know, what's going on stirring in your pants later. Let's fucking go find some uh, more artillery of sorts. Oh, like, sits there and, like, pulls his shirt down. Obviously, nothing's going on. But he's like, there's nothing going on in my pants. That's rude. Hey. Um, <laughs> don't, you, you don't worry about what's going on in my pants. I'll worry about what's going on or not going on in my pants. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah no. Like a lot oh, bigger, oh. Man. You got, you got, you got, an, uh, you got a, you got an idea of where to get more people. Well, I mean, for let's first go and meet up with your friends and see if they've had any luck. Good, good point. Uh, Hawk is gonna look at Samantha and be like, "What do you was the, uh, Janva and Gala went straight to the council, to the castle. Do you know that they'd started preparing anything? Well, seeing as how our meeting was only a few hours this ago, morning. I know. Yeah, didn't anticipate this going as poorly as it went. 
Well, we're going to see just how well prepared Waterdeep is in the event of an emergency. Great. Can y'all get a hold of the the big eye stock thing down below? The what? <laughs> you don't know about the big eye stock. Okay. I saw I'm saying. He's gonna look that over the bar. Table and be like, like chicken is delicious. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna look over the bar and be like, "You two know what I'm talking, or one of you knows what I'm talking about at least, right?" Steffi just like looks at you, then like looks away, just like, "Ah, uh, what? That's not for me to answer." And Wes just kind of like, "Uh, we don't, we don't talk about that." Your city is about to burn to the fucking ground, including this lovely bar of yours. Would you rather sit here and deal with semantics of you don't want to talk about it, or would you rather get the help we need to potentially stop your fucking bar from burning? So you say that, and you see, like, color immediately flush in West's cheeks, and he's like, this bar is not burning down. I refuse to let this fucking bar burn. I just built this. And it's lovely. I would hate to see it go. But if nothing happens, it is going to go. So if you know how to get contact, that's please. The savvy's just like, well, I, this, I, I don't look. I, I don't go here. But uh, knowing what I know, he works with the thieves' guilds. So your best end is with someone who's in the thieves' guilds. Fantastic. I mean, I'm gonna look like. like Donnie. To Donnie's house, then. Let's fucking go. Uh, Hulk, like, uh, yeah. Like, uh, swing by the blacksmith first, but yes. And by swing by, Hawk is literally going to, like, run into Care's shop, be like, there's a dragon attacking the city, and then run out of the shop. <laughs> he doesn't even finish. Like, he's, he's just working, and he's just like, great. <laughs> And then Hawk will go back and be like, it's a fire dragon, you should be alright, maybe, hopefully. Bye. <laughs> Kara's just like, I'm immune to fire. What the fuck do I care about a fire dragon? <laughs> He's like, it's Don't a Tuesday. Don't care about the city? <laughs> <laughs> if everybody in the city is dead, you don't have anybody to you sell shit you, to. <laughs> I was like, you, you, tell, you tell the most nomadic motherfucker, don't you care about the city? <laughs> I live part-time on the Feywild. Everybody's about to move to the fate well. Talk like you are so Safer. difficult. Please. <laughs> just... <laughs> um <laughs> I'm leaving I'm leaving for real this time. Bye. Uh, and then starts rushing towards Donnie's house in the North Ward. Knees to chest right. in his armor. Which by the way, Miria is sitting on your shoulder. Can't you like fly? You're I adding would. weight. Oh, I can't, totally. Uh, wow. But, I mean, why would I do that when you are a perfectly strapping young man who seems fairly capable to be able to handle any weight you need? Stop that. Oh. <laughs> oh, like, don't, don't do that. Oh. Alright, uh, so as you it, run, it, out, it, you run out of the tavern, you hear... Uh, you hear uh, West just go, all right, everybody in the cellar. Uh, Trixie, get the battle weapons. <laughs> Trixie just comes up with a big ball in her, in her mouth. like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I imagine she doesn't, Daisy does that. She'll hold something and she'll come. She just does this. She goes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, all right, we got to switch. Here's we got to switch the bar weapons for the killing weapons. So he's like, the what? <laughs> See, there's the bar stick, and then there's the bar stick. <laughs> Damn, I should have had Hawk be like, it might be a good time to call your dad. Um, the big one, not your, not Grayson. Uh, he wouldn't probably help, uh, and he hates me. Um, <laughs> the other one is strong. Okay. Running. We're running. So, you guys are, you guys are hoofing it. So, making your way up to Donnie's. Yep. Allow me to do this real quick. Right. Where is Donovan's? There's Donovan's. 
And then we'll put you here. Oh. You don't exist here. Goodbye. The weakest link. Alright, so. Is that everyone? Good. Cool. Alright. So, you make your way to Donnie's. And let me get... There we are. There we are. On the map. So, as you kind of... And when you get to the door, you notice the door is already open. And, you know, you let yourself in, as this is practically family at this point. And you will see uh, Connie is already in the foyer with all of her bags packed. So, you heard. Makes sense. Um... Johnny had me packing since this morning, because I take it the meeting didn't go well. It didn't. There is a red dragon in the city now. I heard. Yeah. Um, you, you, yeah, go, go somewhere safe. Be safe. Please. Oh, don't worry. He's already mapped out a route. We, we, we'll be just fine. And as you, uh... And as as she says that, Donnie walks uh, in from around the corner, kind of like setting down his own bags. And he's just like, ah, good. Hawk needed to talk to you. Get uh, this way. And he's going to like motion for the dining room. Hawk will follow him and be like, I may need help. You have friends in the Thieves Guild. I can't control Miria, by the way. Just she she wasn't invited. Um, wow! She doesn't, care to her. <laughs> she doesn't care. She's still going with. Uh, she's on your shoulder, Hawk. I don't think she can control where she's going. There you go. I'm like, hey, listen, mm. hey, hey, listen, hey, 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 listen. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the way I yes, will put okay. you in a bar. First, <laughs> not so loud. First of all, not so loud. not so loud. All right. Sorry. I keep keep that on the dime. I'm a city council member now. All right. We don't. We don't talk about the waste management. Anyway, so. Waste management. <laughs> Look, first things first. Uh, your, um, your buddy. Uh, Lark, he, um. You here? No. Is he awake? He, Wait. He, he, he woke up, uh, he woke up about an hour ago. But, uh, he, uh, left. He said, um. He said that he's got a he's got a purpose that he needs to fulfill, and uh, he's not about to let uh, whatever's going on with Tiamat uh, get in get in the way of that. But if he, uh, you know, if if things work out, uh, maybe we'll see him again. I don't know, but the way I see it, he's got that chip on his shoulder, so. Who's to say what's gonna what's gonna happen with his home? But Hawk is like like he says that and like the color drains from Hawk's face and Hawk just like yeah like uh, yeah I guess um I, I'm I'm real sorry no no it's it's fine um. Thieves killed. Yeah, uh, funny you mention that. Uh, me and uh, me and Connie were heading uh, downstairs for that. Uh, I was advised that there might be someone with eye stocks who may have some ability to help. Potentially. Oh, uh, who told you that? Hi, that would be me. Oh, yeah. and he's just like no, finally noticing the the small fairy on Hawk's shoulder, just like my apologies, where are my manners. Uh, name's uh, name's Donny. Maria, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Uh, how how do you know about our uh, our mutual friend? I'm from the Feywild. I oh, get information of everyone and everything, especially those who don't belong in places they shouldn't be. Uh, I see you, you, you play a mean poker game. On a t on occasion, I have. Reason to believe that he, they, it wouldn't really like it all that well if uh, their city burnt to the fucking ground like it's about to. Right. 
yeah. Uh, uh, so what do you what what do you propose to him? What are we offering? Because you know, it's uh, it's gonna it's gonna take something to really convince him to wanna. And I mean, if he saves the city and kills this dragon, he also potentially saves the world, which means he can potentially. Take whatever the fuck he wants. Or it wants. I don't know what it is, actually. Uh, add on to that, if there is no city, there will be the great challenge of relocation and rebuilding elsewhere. And we all know that that's a mess. And an inconvenience. If the city is leveled. And further, if the city is leveled and he's still underneath it, good luck getting out. All right, I will uh, take both perspectives uh, into consideration heavily. And I will uh, I'll see what I can come up with. I can't promise anything. So his, his, his moods get a little unpredictable, and if I just up and say that there's going to be a dragon drop in his city, who knows what's going to happen. But I will, I will talk to him. Thank you. I would say if he has anything that he loves in this city it's potentially going to get hurt as well. So that's another reason to help. Make a very good point. All right. Uh, I will say, uh, and out of, out of uh, the uh, politeness that I have just met you, uh, Miss Maria, Maria, um, I'm gonna, and he's gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say this. He's gonna put a hand on Hawk's shoulder. If I do this, you're gonna owe me a favor. So I'm putting my neck on the line for you. For a lot of people here. And I know that, you know, we've, we've helped each other out in the past, but, um, when it comes down to, uh, when it comes down to the wire, I gotta protect my skin, and I gotta protect my wife's skin. I understand. So I'm gonna I'll, I'll call in that favor when applicable. Point, the the only thing that matters here is you're not you're not gonna ask questions, right? I mean, if you want Fine. someone who's not gonna ask questions, you could also <laughs> ask me. I'm apparently the person who makes deals with people, according to our our. No, right. I've, got a, I've got a running policy. First one's free. Dangerous policy. It gets you in a lot of doors very quickly. That's fair. And he'll hold out his hand to you, Hawk, and he's gonna... You know, kind I'll of like... Firmly shake his hand. Alright. We have an understanding. Alright. Connie! Get the bags! <laughs> And Connie will start like hefting all the bags, and they and she walks into the dining room, and uh, Donnie walks over to this uh, this kind of like this marble bust statue that's kind of sitting between two uh, fine ch china cabinets. You can see that the bust is clearly a likeness of himself, and you watch as he kind of like reaches behind uh, the very like long goblin like ear that was carved onto this uh, statue, and he you hear something click. And then that statue just moves into the wall. And then the wood floor paneling, like in where the statue was, is a set of stairs that leads down. Yeah. And he's going to help his, he'll, yeah, he'll help his wife down first. And then he turns to look at, uh, look at you. Like at both of you. You didn't see nothing. And then he walks down and he moves the statue back into place. I'm gonna take a minute and like huff because it like uh, Connie and Donnie are gone, and he knows Lark. Larkspur is gone. Yep. And he's just gonna sit there for a second and be like, just nod his head and be like, okay, let's go. All right. So, you guys head out now. Going back to Perseus and Cordelia. So you make your way to the House of Frat, which is. A much smaller sect of paladins compared to a lot of the other ones, like, you know, you have Helm and 
so on and so forth. So you make your way to the uh, to the small little uh, monastery. As paladins are, you know, it looks like they are already underway. The you know the dragon basically sounded the alarm. They're getting all their armor on. They're getting into their uh, into their squadrons and getting ready to like move out. And you and uh, throughout all the kerfuffle of this, uh, you see um, you will see uh, Sir Colin just kind of like directing uh, all of the um, the newer uh, the student paladins about um, where they need to be, what their duties are going to be, while all of the knighted ones are getting ready to move out, getting their mounts, getting like their provisions. And you will see uh, also uh, kind of like Ferris running across the courtyard. Are you okay over there? Jesus Christ. Huh. Yep. So... As you, you will see Ferris just like kind of like running across the courtyard as she stops and she's just like Tarsius, Cordelia. Did you did you see it? Did you hear it? Did you did you see it? Yeah, the big dragon, the the gold dragon. Uh we gotta go. Um, you gotta get out of here. Get everyone to go. Yeah, I think. Fight, but still go. Yeah, I think we're working on that. Um, uh, Sir Colin's kind of like taking over things while uh, while Sister Sarah's out on pilgrimage. Um, I uh, kind of don't know what to do. I'm a little scared. Oh, uh, well, I faced I faced a dragon once, and I did it didn't work out for me. So, oh uh, well, you don't have anything to be afraid about. Um, just like go into the woods and hide, and then don't come out until friends come get you. I, um, I can't. Um, and um. Uh, She'll she'll kind of like look around, like look behind her as uh, there's like a like a kind of like a little like library area within the monastery. It's not very big. It's like basically a room. And she'll be like, I need to, I kind of need to stay to take care of the pages. What, what pages? And uh, you, you kind of like look to where she looked, and you see a uh, small little baby paladins, like little like three, four years old, wearing, like, the little, like, frocks with the symbol order. And she's just like, uh, one of my duties as, uh, you know, part of my new oath is I train the new, uh, the, the pages to become squires, and then the squires will become paladins. It's kind of how our order works. And, uh, these pages kind of, um, you know, we, we take in, you know, kids that don't really have anyone. Just like Look at my sister. We were once oh. children with nothing. We gotta save the children. Okay. Um. And you'll see, and like you'll see, and it's like a, kind of like an eclectic group. You have one that's like a little half orc. You have like a little baby uh, dragonborn, and then like an even smaller like baby kobold, and they're just kind of like all looking at you all. I'm gonna look for like a bag. I don't know, like like a bag of potatoes or something, like a just a big grown yeah. up something. Mix chef a backpack. All right, hop on. We're leaving. Oh, it's like where? Where are you gonna go? Like I we're... don't know yet. We'll figure it out on the way. Um, we're gonna meet up with our friends, and then we can uh, wait. Uh, Do they tell you where to take the children? I uh, we're gonna. I mean, there's like you know sewers under the city. We're. I think we're gonna be allowed to uh, use some of the passageways under the castle, but. Okay, then I'll escort you to the castle. Let's go. Um, Cordelia, okay. you know magic, right? Obviously. You should tell everyone where we're going. Oh, God. Alright, so gather up the kids. Ferris was with you, and you uh, kind of like lead like almost like a school line of... Uh, Young squires and then pages as you head towards uh, Waterdeep Castle. Okay. I'll say by the ready, time. But this is what he's gonna do. Right. All right. I'll say by the time that you guys get there, uh, you will see the horses that Gala and uh, Janva had just had taken up there, uh, kind of like off to the side, as to kind of show that they're already there. As you guys head into the castle to see what's the plan is going to be. Okay. Okay. So, lastly, we'll leave with patience as 
you make your way to the guard tower, uh, to the you know the guard house, uh, as quickly as you can. You hopping off Greta, uh, Cole as well, as you run into the building, uh, where you see all the guards. Like it's it is full scramble as the guards are grabbing their gear. They are heading outside. And you will very quickly find uh, your grandfather uh, amongst the, the chaos of that. Yeah. As he kind of like double takes when he sees you and he's just like, you should not be here right now. There's a there's a lot. Go- like, I'm not trying to do- talk down to you, but there's a lot going on. Uh, I'm I'm really sh- bad. Huh? OK, are, are, are you- he'll he'll kneel down and just like, are you are you OK? And look, I know it's I know it's scary. But your grandpa's got this, you know. We're we trained all our lives for this. We're gonna we're gonna protect the city. It's an ancient red dragon. I mean, I get that. I mean, hey, at least ancient dragons are as worse as they come. Part that she's thinking out loud. It's just like, Grandpa, this is the one that took me. Okay, so now it's personal. <laughs> Do you have somewhere to go? Like you see, like he normally his normal joking nature is just—it's just all gone now. As he's now in in guard mode. It's like, I need you guys to find somewhere to, you know, tuck in, stay, you know, stay hidden. Maybe somewhere underground if you can. All right. Well, don't worry. We'll. This city's meant to, you know, withstand dragon attacks. There's a lot. It's going to be great. It's going to be fine. Okay. It's been a long five minutes. <laughs> And I'll say, as you say, it's he's given you five minutes. Um, I'm going to need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to need yes. Hawk and Miria to make me a dexterity saving throw. And I'm going to need Tarsius and Cordelia to make me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. As this is happening all at once. Fifteen. Fourteen. Okay. Dirty 20. Dirty 20, okay. Uh, like, bro, like sis, dirty 20. Dirty. Nice, all right. What'd you get, patience? 21. 21, okay, so. All right, so the 20s pass. Okay. We'll For see. Hawk and Maria, however, you guys are going to basically fall on your ass as the entire ground just suddenly shifts and rumbles. And next thing you know, just an explosion of fire as you guys are just knocked like basically but knocked into the far wall of Donnie's house and when you guys step out uh, you guys like kind of like shake yourselves from the from the uh, explosion and you step out of the wreckage you will see actually let me give you a visual of what has happened So you'll see that the street that was once, you know, pristine and well manicured, but had people kind of like running with their things to cover, like to, you know, people trying to evacuate. You now see fire. You see stone smelted from heat. You see like pools of lava, but you also see monsters emerging from this wreckage. As you will see, these draconic abominations, the same ones that you saw at the Wizard Tower and that you saw in Minotuan, uh Hawk. Uh, for Miria, this is definitely a new experience. You haven't seen anything quite like this yet. You've seen some strange things in your time, but this is this is a new one. That's what's as you weird. See, as you will see, uh, people, what was once people, but their features grotesquely stretched and morphed with that of a dragon. You will see... Uh, these huge um, humanoid-shaped dragons that look like different body parts of d- 
different dragons stitched together like one, you know, giant husk. As they are starting to make their way through the streets, emerging from the fires, from the rubble. As if they were just dropped there. Okay. As so there are... Sorry, as there are bodies kind of strewn through the street, there's chaos everywhere. As the city is now starting to burn. Oh, like, how are they here? How are they here? How are they here? Like, like he would take a, like, step back in a Donnie's house, like, how are they here? I'm assuming the fucking dragon that dropped them. Uh, I have a question for you, though. Fight or fly? Hawk, like, peek outside again and look at that number of creatures, and Hawk, like, fly. Okay, step outside of the booth, ladies. Okay. And she is going to uh, use Giant's Bite to become right. large. So, since she is now large, her wings and everything should also scale. Right. And her strength and everything is enough. She should be able to carry Hawk, correct? If if it is stated that she becomes a large sized creature, when... all right, yes, that is that is how that works. Okay, so she's gonna crack her, her neck and just kind of like snap her fingers, and she's going to become a large creature, and then. Uh, She's just gonna grab Hawk, and, like underneath hit her arm, and just fly away. Is there, like Ken doll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. so you fly over the city of Waterdeep, and as you fly uh, over the city, uh, with no direction other than to get away from the wreckage. Point me in a direction, see... my man. The next thing that uh, you will see, that all of you will see, is that while it is, while it has been sunset, it grows dark very quickly, okay. and it, and it's almost like a giant shadow has just been cast over the city. And if you so happen to look up, you will see that the sun mm. has been obscured. Oh, it's great! Been completely blocked in a total eclipse as the land turns r blood red in that moment. Hawk, like, how the fuck can a dragon do that? Why? Uh, I don't think this is potentially from your dragon, but, but maybe from the, the the god that you guys apparently pissed the fuck off. Diamant? Aye, that one. Yes. Tiamat has now declared war on Waterdeep. And she is going to get that mask one way or another. Fuck, like, I called her a bitch one time. Um, it's all it takes! <laughs> Got her sensitive. Which direction are we going, Mr. Hawkins? Uh, I don't even know what that noise was. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think it picked up on the mic, but I was just sitting no, here. No, I like, kind of heard it. High pitched squeal just came out of me, oh. and I don't that's, know where That's the sound of Hawk being carried by a giant strong woman. <laughs> um. Yes, she went from a foot and a half to double Hawk size. That is, she, went that from, is she went from Navi to, you know, Great Fairy. Oh, yeah. We right. love that. <laughs> Hawk, like, I guess I can't stuff you in a jar. Okay. Um, yeah, that's racist. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, like, you don't say shit like that to Lynn. Uh, <laughs> uh, stuff you in a jar. Uh, no, so... Uh, <coughs> shit, I don't... Um, I... Mm, look for... Look for the kid and her dad. Uh, you're looking for a big goat. Anybody, really. You look for a, a kid, two tieflings on a goat, or a very large minute. That sounds like 
a terrible joke. That sounds like, um, a, ter that sounds like a terrible <laughs> setup for a punchline. Two, two tieflings on a goat, or a minotaur and a Medusa. All right, well, you keep your eyes up as well, and let's see if we can't find us some of your party. All right, so before we end for tonight, any final, any, any final moments, patience, as you guys... No, as you, as you would have like stepped out of the guardhouse uh, upon hearing that, you see basically the same scene. You see the draconic abominations emerging. You see fire. You see melted like stone and magma filling the streets. Tarsus and Cordelia, it's a little different for you as the castle doesn't seem to have been touched yet. I'm just. Making... But you see the eclipse. You see the eclipse. You you smell and hear the city burning. You hear people screaming in panic. You see the fire starting to rise above the walls of the castle ward. I'm just making sure these kids uh, don't say and say anything it's... bad, I guess. And, say if, if you, and if you do happen to look up, you might see a giant woman flying in the sky. Oh, well, <laughs> these beautiful fairy wings. Oh, pretty. Um, like how a group of strangers came and saved us and made sure that we were okay. I feel yeah. that I must do that in favor. Yeah, as the kids are very frightened, and some of them are starting to cry. And I'm like, as yeah. Ferris is doing her best to hush them. Yeah, I'm just like trying to do faces, trying to like encourage them. I'm gonna like put one on my bicep, and then like throw the other one on the other bicep, and just like move them around. Just anything I can to distract them. All right. Uh, Cordelia's just gonna. Um, he sees the eclipse. And she's gonna do her little meditation thing that she's gonna do. Uh, she's just gonna look up in the sky, close her eyes, and just pray, I guess. But, you know, he's not really super attuned to religion or anything. First, he she will kind of silently pray to Taylor, but will get distracted and email and then divert to the snake lady the name i don't remember <laughs> dendar the night serpent uh -huh, yeah yeah All right so you clasp your hands and pray it, it, this moment kind of rocketing you back to your childhood then the few times that you've watched the sky turn the same blood red before <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that. Honestly. Yeah, remember that? Remember that? <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> Remembering the panic in uh, on your parents, uh, in your parents when this had happened, the chaos that erupted through the city that you were staying in when this had first initially happened. And you think, uh, as you start to pray to Paylor, and you just think, he can't, he can't hear me right now. And so you kind of reach inward a little more darker, a little more naturally to Dendar. And you hear this cold, raspy sigh that draws into a hiss. And she says, There will be many, many meals tonight. So many horrors. So many nightmares. I cannot wait to see what happens next. Mm -hmm. All right. As and uh, patience, I will say that as you like, you notice that the su the, the sky has turned blood red, and you hear the thrum of his of his wings beating heavily. And you look up in the sky, and you see the, the massive ancient red dragon as he crests right in the center of the eclipse and then you watch as his form shrinks into that of his humanoid stance uh, his humanoid stature and he plummets into the city and you don't know where he went uh, and I'll say somewhere in the distance you'll probably hear a very very angry human barbarian yelling from the top of his lungs outside god Damn it, not again! <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're gonna Poor end tonight. <laughs> Poor guy just doesn't get a break, man. <laughs> yeah. Poor West. Poor West. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so that's where we'll end it for tonight. So thank you guys for playing. Thank you, Nick, for joining. Hey. Thanks. Welcome to the chaos. I can now tell you nothing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you, Nick. <laughs> you're, you're muted. I said no more sleep, Agent. Yes. <laughs> yes, because... For now. Yeah. No, no more No more f feeding Victor bad ideas. I mean, he can feed me bad, bad ideas. ideas. It's up to me if I use them. Fair. And they weren't bad ideas. They were great ideas. For you. <laughs> They're, great. They're traumatizing <laughs> ideas, and I love them. Every single think, one of them. I think it's not a bad idea. It's that traumatizing Nick ideas. Nick just sends Vic stuff, and Vic goes, that's so fucked up. I love it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> that's exactly how it goes. He's like, hey, look at this monster. I'll be like, you know? Or I'm like, hey, here's a, here's a tweak you could possibly do to, to do something else. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that'll be fun. So, yeah, so. Yeah. I don't know, we'll see. I mean, he sends me so many D&D TikToks. Who knows which one I'll use? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, all right. With that, everyone have a good night. Enjoy your nightmares. Um, we will see you all in two weeks. So. Night. Bye. 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 Bye.